All right. Thank you very much for having me. I'm actually a born and raised New Yorker. Um, spent my whole life here up until 2010. Um, and once you're a New Yorker, you're always a New Yorker. But now I live in, um, I can get, uh, now I live in Amherst, Massachusetts, which if, uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's in what is called Western Massachusetts. It's really in the center of the state. But um, I, I don't want to say it's the claim to fame, but it is a definitely woo-centric. So as a practicing pediatrician, my job has been made much more difficult by the fact that a good proportion of my patients um, simultaneously see alternative medicine practitioners. And it makes my job very difficult. And that, that is the topic of my talk today. And it's going to overlap with some of the other presentations you're going to hear today. But um, you know, when I'm seeing a patient and they're also being followed by a so-called alternative complementary medicine practitioner, a lot of times I don't even know about it. And so the way I'm managing them is not necessarily uh, coalescing with the way uh, they are managing the patients. And when I don't know what's happening, it can make things very difficult. So sometimes it feels like I'm battling sea monsters in a very dangerous, murky ocean. This is an actual screenshot from a message sent to me by my nurse just a couple of weeks ago. And it says, um, patient was seen at an office visit um, on the 18th for fatigue. He had normal labs as part of that visit. And the mom states that his fatigue has continued. And he believes, uh, he saw a chiropractor, and the chiropractor believed that after examining the patient, he had decreased blood flow to the brain, which may be causing his symptoms. And he wanted a Doppler test, a, a true medical test, by the way, um, to evaluate this. And the mom wants to pursue this testing and wanted me, as the primary care provider, to review it and talk to mom and, and, and order the test, is what she really wanted. Um, so this, is, I thought, was a great example of where two worlds are colliding. Um, there's this, what we, well, there's no other way to describe it. There's the pseudo-scientific world and actually the science-based medicine world um, colliding. And this is a great example of, of the problem. And so I asked the mom on the phone, I was very polite, I, who, who the, the chiropractor was. I would love to speak to him. Um, so it was Wellesley Chiropractic. Um, and um, they specialize in family-centered chiropractic healthcare and pediatrics and craniopathy and positive lifestyle support. Um, there's a lot of registered trademarks here, um, but you know he is a president emeritus of the sacro-occipital technique registered trademark, um, et cetera. And this is kind of wordy, but basically um, explaining how 90% uh, of a child's neurological development um, is completed in the first six years of life. It's really important to have their spine checked for subluxations. I did not learn that in medical school. Um, and that subluxations can create abnormal compensatory patterns that they carry into adulthood. It affects their overall health and development. These neurological, functional, biomechanical, adaptive, dysfunctional patterns known as subluxations, which by the way don't exist, can occur when external or internal stresses are too much for the body to adapt to be in a positive manner and an overload occurs. They actually were very nice of them to put those quotation marks in occur in the body to compensate for this process. I mean, I can't even go on. I cannot even continue reading. Um, this is a, a picture of him doing a, a, a procedure. The primary mechanism of injury to the spinal cord appears to be excessive traction applied to the spinal canal and cord during the birth process. Apparently, birth is a very, um, I don't know, I guess, unnatural thing. But just look at that kid's eyes. I mean, <laughs> this cannot be good. Um, but uh, I'm not going to step on, on a later speaker. Uh, Clay Jones is going to talk a lot about chiropractic. I am not. But I love this. The ultimate expression of human potential is the true gift of the chiropractic adjustment. <laughs> so this woman um, took her, her teenage son an hour and 35 minutes to Wellesley from Amherst and back for these adjustments, which he would get from time to time. But she didn't need to travel that far because I'm going to really focus the rest of my talk on another place where many of my patients go that is right 
in an adjoining town, and it's this place. It's the Northampton Wellness Associates. There's nothing special about this place. There's many of these. There's, they're all over the place, but this is the one that, that many of the patients that seek alternative care go to. They're not primary care providers. They are physicians. They're MDs, and um, they usually they follow patients who have problems that are difficult to diagnose, fatigue, aches and pains. Many of these things are often a consequence of behavioral health issues, um, depression. Um, sometimes there are other problems that we just can't figure out. But um, you can see on their, on their webpage, ow, my muscles hurt, my joints are aching. Could it be Lyme, arthritis, or fibromyalgia? Well, guess what? It will be one of those three. <laughs> Um, I've got cancer, I'm scared, what can I do? Well, you can boost your immunity and improve your ability to clear cancer cells from your body. Help, my nose is running and my chest is tight, could it be allergies? We can help. Food allergy testing and natural therapies that really work. Um, and here are some of the services they provide, um, dietary counseling, nutritional and herbal supplements, intramuscular and intravenous nutrient therapy, chelation therapy for heart and vascular diseases, and for heavy metal toxicity, which I guarantee you they will find. Uh, natural hormone therapy for aging, menopausal. Um, and I love this. They utilize a wider range of scientifically validated diagnostic te techniques, much wider than the narrow range of scientifically validated techniques that I use. Um, and of course, feel free to go to their catalog, which is only available to their patients paying cash. Um, to their store, you can only get access to if you have the password. But if you look, I actually have a, a copy of the list, which is 50, I can't read that. What does it say at the top? I circled it. 57 pages of supplements and nutrients and various things that they will prescribe or sell you. Um, so I'm actually going to go through some real cases. These are actual patients of mine. And uh, hopefully, I'll have some time. I'll have time to get through them. Um, but if not, you'll get the idea. So case one is a seven-year-old boy with autistic spectrum disorder, food and pollen allergies, and occasional constipation. Um, so the, the parent of, of this seven-year-old, I didn't know about this till later. We finally got the records. By the way, we almost never get the records from this place. We have to request them. And it's clear why. They don't want us to see. Um, so the, the mom of this seven-year-old took him from my practice to the land of <laughs> wellness. <clears throat> Not far away, this is very close, a few miles from my practice. So, you know, basically when I got the notes, after a very kind of not exciting discussion, review of the patient's history, you know, nothing special, um, at, the, at the bottom it said this, additionally, the patient presents with unspecified immune disorder and history of malabsorption syndrome. Now, this patient had neither of these, uh, had no immune disorder, unless you consider allergies an immune disorder, I guess technically allergies are related to your immune system. Malabsorption syndrome, no. Um, malabsorption is a real, by the way, a real medical entity. Again, pseudoscience always takes something real from medicine and then just spins it into fantastic ridiculousness. But, so there is something called malabsorption where there's a problem with your intestine and you can't absorb nutrients and you have very uh, predictable consequences of that. But it's also a catch-all term for alternative medicine folks. But so this patient had nothing. The only GI-related thing he had was some constipation, which was due to withholding, which is not uncommon in kids with uh, certain um, cognitive issues. But the note concluded with the diagnoses, allergic rhinitis, he had, a, he had allergies, unspecified immune disorder, malabsorption syndrome. And then what proceeded was an incredible battery of tests, another hallmark of quackademic medicine. Um, so this is an actual screenshot. I've redacted names and doctors and anyone that might be offended. Um, but this is an actual screenshot of his chart. This is a medical record. I'm not violating anything HIPAA-wise. But so I just want you to see, um, so for the diagnosis at the top of unspecified immune disorder, all of these lab tests, which I'm going to go through, by the way. And then the plan uh, for allergic rhinitis was to consider some, some testing, by the way, which we had already done. Um, for malabsorption syndrome, there were some other tests that I'm going to show you in a minute. So what are these tests? I'm going to actually, this is going to be maybe boring to some of you, but maybe interesting to learn what some of these tests are. So these are the actual tests that were done on this patient. 
So immune globulins, IgA, IgE, IgM, IgG, and IgG subclasses. Again, this sounds really fancy and scientific to, to patients when they say they're doing these tests, but I'm gonna explain what they are. So these, these are used to assess immune function in immunodeficiency if we suspect that. Um, IgE is specific to allergies, and we sometimes measure that when we're questioning, questioning whether there is an allergy. And by the way, we had already done that in this particular patient. So we had the results already. So these were unnecessary tests. This patient did not have an immune deficiency. No one ever suspected that. Um, unnecessary. He had copper, magnesium, and zinc. There are occasions, very rare deficiencies that can exist. And you can have very dangerous elevations of these things. This patient had none of these, nor were any of them suspected. And these tests were completely meaningless. He had something called anti-streptolysin O testing. This is an antibody against the strep bacteria. We rarely take, do this test. Um, sometimes we'll do it if we are following an active infection that isn't responding normally. Um, there was zero indication to perform this test in this patient that did not have an infection. This is a similar test, similar to the last one I just mentioned. Sometimes it's ordered during complications of a strep infection, like rheumatic fever or a kidney uh, inflammation that you can sometimes get. There was, again, no sensible reason why this test should ever have been performed. He had a test for vitamin D, a good test to do when we suspect vitamin D deficiency, um, or if someone actually had a true malabsorption, it's a fat-soluble vitamin if they are unable to absorb fats for some reason. Again, this patient had absolutely no indication of this. This should not have been ordered. He had urine organic acids done, a test for in rare inborn errors of metabolism. Crazy, absolutely no reason to do this on this patient. So where were these tests done? They were done in what we call scam labs, okay? Scam labs are laboratories essentially created to cater to quacks, and I kid you not. So this is the Great Plains Laboratory. It's pretty notorious. Nobody sends blood, urine, anything to this lab unless they are a quack. And so it's used widely by scam providers. It, it supports bogus diagnoses. They, the reports come complete with unsupported interpretations of their own lab results, and then suggests dietary supplements that you should then give your patient. And guess where you get the dietary supplements? from the store run by the laboratory. This is directly linked from the lab website right to this site where they will then sell you the, the supplements that the lab reports recommend you use. They're completely bogus. He also got fasting plasma amino acids. Again, a, rarely do you have a problem in this department. It's not recommended routinely for people with autism, although we often see it done by, by uh, all complementary alternative medicine providers. Um, again, this patient had no indication to have these labs done. This is Genova Diagnostics, another uh, well-known lab. It was mentioned earlier. I think uh, Harriet Hall mentioned this lab. This patient had what's known as a comprehensive parasitology profile. <laughs> Sounds very scientific, but it's a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> but here, it's interesting. It can help reveal hidden causes behind acute or chronic conditions, hidden meaning we want to find them. Um, so it, it's a comprehensive test for, um, stool test for evaluating the presence of parasites and it, it also evaluates levels of beneficial flora, imbalanced flora, pathogenic bacteria and yeast. I guarantee you it will turn something up. So this testing for parasites is important. I mean testing for parasites, not this test, but actually truly testing for parasites is important if you suspect a parasitic infection. This kid did not have one. Um, testing for beneficial flora or yeast in your stool has no meaning, has no known clinical value. So this is a bogus test specifically designed for scam providers to diagnose a non-existent condition that you could then treat with real, potentially harmful medications. And it is at best malfeasance and probably it should be considered malpractice, but it's done all the time. So follow up on case one, the diagnosis from all these lab results was there were numerous low or borderline amino acid levels, meaningless. The treatment was a customized amino acid blend sold through the Northampton Wellness Associates website in conjunction with the laboratory and through their own supplement store. The second diagnosis, fungal dysbiosis, a made up 
uh, diagnosis. The lab report showed two plus uh, rotatorula and candida in the stool and elevated arabinose in the urine. None of these things mean anything, have no clinical significance, but the treatment was a true antifungal medication that patient took by mouth called nystatin and a proprietary probiotic blend that could manage this literally fictitious problem. That's case one, and by the way, that is just one little case, and I could keep going. So I'll go to case two. Case two is an 18-year-old with a long-standing history of fatigue and vague aches and pains, very similar to the patient that I showed you the message from in the first slide. Um, and this is, again, a screenshot of his record that we finally obtained. And it says, the patient complains of CFS, that's chronic fatigue syndrome. The patient describes fatigue, severe. There are no problems with initiation or maintenance of sleep. He averages seven to eight hours, blah, blah, blah. He currently is doing well without significant effective symptoms. Percent of energy level is 20 to 60% fluctuates. Talks about the joint pains, et cetera. The assessment is chronic fatigue, fatigue syndrome and joint pain, okay? The plan is all of these labs, there's lots of labs there, many labs, and then there's another page of labs. There's more labs. I blew it up so you could see it bigger. Lots of labs, crazy. And by the way, every one of these lab tests costs a lot of money. So joint pains, multiple sites. The recommendations were, if I can read this, um, follow up in three months, order all these labs. Oh, and? Prescriptions, doxycycline, an antibiotic, 100 milligrams twice a day. Tinidazole, a antiparasite, antibiotic, antibacterial as well, 500 milligrams twice a day, two consecutive days each week, like take it out of a hat, just made up. Um, tinidazole, that's not a medicine I prescribe. Um, Solheim's the next speaker who probably knows more about it. But if you go on their website, the Northampton Wellness Associates website, it explains what it's for. It can remove biofilms that block the immune system and block antibiotics. Uh, and then in, in the chart also that I obtained was this. Um, this was a practitioner recommendation, Total Pro, which is for the treatment of good bacteria for the gut, or is good bacteria for the gut. Saccharomyces boulardii, these are probiotics, good yeast for the gut and biofilm defense, which kills your biofilm. Uh, here's biofilm defense. Um, it is a dietary supplement. It probably has, by the way, nothing, none of this stuff is probably in there, um, but none of this stuff does anything for you anyway. Um, follow up, this is a follow up note from this office. This is a follow up visit, it says, patient to be evaluated for joint pain, multiple sites has been taking tinidazole and doxy and has been feeling much better. He notes some die-off response from tinidazole. Die-off response, <laughs> that's another um, alternative medicine practitioner term to uh, basically when you, there's, there is an actual real reaction phenomenon called the jarrett herxheimer reaction, which is when you kill certain tick-borne diseases, the very first dose of antibiotics, sometimes you get a little flushing and fever from the release of toxins from the actual organism. It occasionally happens, it's self-limited, but this is a term that they use whenever a patient is being treated for a phony infectious process and is complaining about anything, they call it a die-off response or herxing. This is an alternative medicine term. So this is the patient reported some die-off response from this non-existent infection. Um, concerning the chronic fatigue syndrome, significant improvement since starting the antibiotics. Why would that be? Um, assessment, other high-risk medication follow-up, <laughs> chronic fatigue syndrome, Lyme disease, Epstein-Barr virus, IgG positive, and more tests. So it's interesting to note that, um, let's see, so these are more, uh, let's see, recommendations. Patient have labs drawn next week, will remain on antibiotics, start low-dose naltrexone and Valtrex, okay. <laughs> now Trexone, I'm not even going to get into this. Uh, now Trexone is used to treat opiate addiction. 
Um, and um, Valtrex is used for often for herpes infections. Um, so Epstein-Barr virus is a herpes, part of the herpes family of viruses. He does not have an Epstein-Barr virus infection, but he was IgG positive for Epstein-Barr virus, which everybody in this room is as well. It means at some point in your life you've been exposed to that virus, which you all have, and you will have IgG for the rest of your life, like this patient does. But they don't either know what they're doing or they're just pretending, which is what I think is going on. Um, so they diagnosed him with, with, with Epstein-Barr virus infection, probably causing his chronic fatigue, and so they're gonna treat it with Valtrex. By the way, we don't treat Epstein-Barr virus, true Epstein-Barr viruses, virus infections with Valtrex anyway. So none of it makes sense. So he's getting now Trexone, Valtrex, doxycycline, tinidazole. And I'm not gonna go into this, but this is a back and forth. I got this um, from the practice as well. It's a back and forth communication with the staff. I don't know if they knew I got this, but it basically says, um, so patient is so sure he had Lyme disease, I started treating negative Lyme through Life Labs, which is a quack lab. Patient should be switched Oh wait, patients should be called to see if they want to do Igenix, which is another quack lab, to see if that test might be positive. They basically shop around to different quack labs until they find a, some kind of positive test. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's really incredible to, to read the dialogue. It's just, I, I think they honestly believe what they're doing is, I think they get, they get so caught up with their make-believe, they think they're actually doing something. I'm not, I don't think they're, they're purposefully pulling the wool over anyone's eyes. I think they're just delusional. Um, the scam playbook is, is pretty predictable. The patient is labeled with a fictitious diagnosis, usually multiple diagnoses. And in fact, every single patient ends up with a diagnosis. Now, isn't that interesting? These are patients that often don't get diagnoses from us. Why? Because we're honest, because we don't know the answer always. They always know the answer. There's always a diagnosis, there's always a treatment, and by the way, the diagnosis is usually always the same. Everybody has malabsorption syndrome, and everybody has some unspecified immune disorder. Um, multiple tests are ordered in a shotgun fashion. We're all taught in medical school never to order tests like that, because you're always gonna find something, um, and it's gonna be erroneous. Bogus labs and laboratory developed tests are ordered. Unnecessary and potentially dangerous treatments are recommended. Those are real drugs that this patient is getting. None of them are necessary. And then follow-up is advised, so they continue to see them and charge them, and usually they're diagnosing additional things along the way. So this is the scam playbook that we see over and over and over again. And um, this is us, we're like Thor, or whoever that is, trying to fight the serpent, and um, it's almost like it's a never-ending battle because I don't see the end point here. Um, these are physicians. They are actually licensed to do what they're doing. They're allowed to do what they're doing. Um, no one's looking over their shoulders. And their patients are double-dipping. They're seeing me for their regular care, and they're seeing them for their specialized care that I don't quite understand. It's quite a little bit beyond my grasp, the narrow-minded sort of traditional medical practitioner. Um, so I, I kind of wanted to give you this as a prelude to Dr. Himes, who's gonna talk about some other interesting quackademic medicine that um, kids are falling prey to. And then um, you're gonna hear a bit, a bit about chiropractic and kids. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation as a prelude and questions will be answered uh, later on in the day. Thank you very much.